Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. It's been a little over two years since I began posting lecture videos with the intention of systematically introducing the Chinese internal styles. In the last two years, I have posted 125 videos covering the three internal styles of Xing Yi, Ba Gua, and Tai Chi, along with Xiu Dao and other content related to Chinese culture. Time flies when we are having fun. It's been a fun two years for me, and I hope for you as well. In the last two years, I have received a great deal of support from you all, and especially those among you who have contributed great ideas that have really enriched this channel. Again, thank you all for your contributions and support. This channel won't be what it is without it. Your support is the driving force behind this channel. I have no intention of stopping, at least in the foreseeable future. So I'm sure you all can look forward to a lot more interesting content. On that note, let's get high on some really good tea. This week's tea is Da Hong Pao or Big Red Robe. This tea is from Wu Yi Shan or Wu Yi Mountain in Fujian Province. It belongs to the Wulong family of teas. Da Hong Pao is an interesting name with an interesting legend behind it. It is said that many years ago, a poor scholar became sick on the way to take his rural exams in the capital. He recovered after drinking this tea served by a monk from Tianxin Temple. Some time later, he married the emperor's daughter. One day, the emperor was sick and he in turn served this tea to the emperor, after which the emperor recovered as well. As a token of appreciation, the emperor rewarded the scholar with a red robe, which was considered a high honor back then and asked to put the red robe on the tea tree to show his gratitude. From then on, the tea tree began to be called Big Red Rob or Da Hong Pao. <clears throat> By the way, this is just a legendary story. In reality, any disease that can be cured by drinking tea alone is not a serious disease, or maybe just a disease of expecting a wonderful tea. So, <clears throat> the original Da Hong Pao tree were and still are the six bushes growing on the cliff. <clears throat> Starting from um, many years ago, those six bushes have been protected by the government. All the Da Hong Pao you are drinking nowadays are actually tree leaves from trees through asexual reproduction. A tree reproduction method that uses a branch of a tree to grow a new tree, or else it could also be tea from that region produced using the same processing method. <clears throat> of course, the best Da Hong Pao are from the six mother bushes since they have about 400 years worth of history. If someone claims their Da Hong Pao to be the original one, they are most likely making it up. Since 2006, the local government has been prohibiting anyone from privately picking tea leaves from the six mother Da Hong Pao trees. And all the tree leaves from those original six bushes are, in modern times, almost exclusively used scientific research or for some special events. For example, in 2005, 20 grams of Da Hong Pao picked from those six bushes were sold for approximately 200,000 RMB 
or about 30,000 US dollar, equals to 1.5 million US dollar per kilogram, way more expensive than gold. I have a few cans of Da Hong Pao tea of different qualities in terms of flavors. The best one so far is this one. Da Hong Pao leaves are very long and the dark in color on account of fermentation. The tea has a unique orchid fragrance. A good quality brewed Da Hong Pao tea will be bright and clear with an orange yellow color. <clears throat> to prove Da Hong Pao, the water should be boiled to a minimum of 98 degrees Celsius. It is especially important to use water at this temperature for the first brew, or else the flavor will not be optimal. Brewing time should be around 10 seconds for the first brew, 30 seconds for the second brew, and 50 seconds for the third. Please let me know in the comments if you have enjoyed Da Hong Pao tea, or feel free to share about the tea you are enjoying this week. Now, let's move on to the main topic for today. Recently, a student of mine asked me about the relationship between the five elements and the five organs in Xing Yi practice. I think it is a great topic, and I'd like to introduce it in today's video. Topics covered in today's video include first, five elements in Chinese culture, second, five elements and five organs, third, five elements in martial art practice, fourth, key principles of five elements practice, fifth, misperception of five elements and five organs, sixth, demonstration, seventh, correction of student practice, and eight, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. First, five elements in Chinese culture. In a prior video titled Xing Yi and its Five Elements, I introduced what the five elements are and how to apply five element theory in Xing Yi practice. I highly recommend you watch that video first if you haven't already, and then resume this one. Link is in the description. Five elements is a Chinese philosophical concept used for categorizing everything in the universe into five categories. Jin, Mu, Shui, Huo, Tu, or Metal, Wood, Water, Fire, and Earth. According to Chinese philosophy, anything in the universe can be categorized into five categories, such as five colors, five tastes, five animals, five grains, five sounds, five directions, and so on. In Taoism, five element theory is the next step after yin yang theory in the analysis of the universe and explains the interaction and the relationship between yin and yang. Again, I recommend watching the prior video to get a better understanding of five element theory. So, what is the relationship between the five elements and the five organs? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. Five elements and five organs. Throughout Chinese history, there have existed different correlations between the five elements and the five organs. For example, in Lui Shi Chun Qiu, the five organs are correlated to the five elements as follows liver to metal, spleen to wood, heart to earth kidney to water, and lungs to fire. 
Later on, the Huangdi Neijing, commonly believed to be the earliest TCM document, uses a different set of correlations between five organs and the five elements. Lungs to metal, heart to fire, liver to wood, spleen to earth, and kidneys to water. That system has been the guiding force behind TCM practice so far. It is worth noting that TCM applies five element theory to analyze the relationship between each organ in diagnosis, not merely to analyze each organ based on each element in isolation. Even in TCM, the application of five element theory only provides a basic and rather primitive guidance in practice. This is the key aspect here. So, understanding the relationship between the five elements and the five organs is very important to correctly understand TCM instead of mechanically interpreting it. Mechanically applying five element theory in treatment will kill you patients. No kidding. Having looked at the five elements in the context of the TCM, what about five elements in martial arts? Let's tackle that in the next topic. Topic 3 Five elements in martial art practice. This video focuses on martial art practice, and I will emphasize on the explanation of five element theory used in traditional training. Xing Yi uses five element theory to explain its practice. Of course, other styles such as Tai Chi and Ba Gua apply five element theory to some extent in practice as well, but not as much as Xing Yi. So, I will use Xing Yi to explain today's topic. Now, my first question to you. Is Xing Yi the first style to use five element theory? Let me also answer it. Well, the answer is no. Actually, the earliest writing record of the usage of a five element theory to explain martial art practice can be found in Shaolin Chuanpu Zazu, a Shaolin martial art document written approximately around the Qing Dynasty. In this document, Wu Xing and its application are mentioned in at least two places, including internal and external five elements explanation and bi wu xing or seal five elements. In this book, five elements and five organs are correlated in terms of martial power generation and its impact on health. With regards to impact on health, it emphasizes the extension of a movement that can motivate internal energy with correlates to different organs in terms of health benefits. And uh, that's it. It's very simple and straightforward without any fancy description. The famous <coughs> Xin Yi Liu He Quan Pu commonly believed uh, to be written by Dai Longbang, the founder of a Dai family Xin Yi, contains the quote Xin Dong Ru Huo Yan, Gan Dong Ru Fei Jian, Fei Dong Chen Lei Sheng, Pi Dong Li Jia Gong, Shen Dong Ru Kuai Ru Feng, Wu Xing Shun Yi Qi, Fang Dan Ji Cheng Gong. End quote. Translation. Heart energy acts like fire flame. Liver energy acts like a flying sword. Lung energy acts like a thunder sound. Spleen energy acts like a forceful attack. Kidney energy acts fast like the wind. 
Five elements move as a unified energy and courageously achieve the goal in combat. End translation. So, according to the Dai Longbang, the five organ energies, which indicates the martial nature of the five elements, are related to martial effects. Again, he did not talk about five elements practice since back then there were no five elements at the routine or movement practice. Later on, Xing Yi with Ji became the first martial art to systematically use five elements to name and describe martial art practice. Li Luoneng, the founder of Xing Yi, had learned Dai family Xin Yi and later developed Xing Yi based on his Xin Yi practice. Even though there might be some movements in Xin Yi similar or identical to Xing Yi five element form, Li Luoneng was the first person to use five elements to describe and categorize five specific practices. As mentioned in my prior video, even though there exists an inner relationship between the five elements in terms of generation and destruction, you should not perceive the Xing Yi five element feast to share the same relationships, or else you will only achieve a mechanical understanding, rife with misperceptions. In other words, the Xing Yi five elements feast are not a game of a rock, paper, scissor, lizard, spoke. In Xing Yi, the five elements are five types of power, not five types of techniques. For example, Wang Xiangzhai, a great martial artist of the last century and the founder of Yi Quan, used the five elements to describe the nature of five powers. For example, the power should be as strong as metal, and so on. So, according to Wang Xiangzhai, metal power is hard, wood power is supportive, water power is flexible, fire power is explosive, and earth power is solid. Again, there is no specific correlation between the five elements and the five organs in terms of practice. In teaching, I always emphasize that to practice the five elements of Xing Yi, certain body areas should be focused on in terms of force generation. But that has nothing to do with the specific internal organ. Also, five element form should demonstrate whole body power during Fa Jin, which should go beyond each element, each organ, each body area, and so on. This is called Wu Xing He Yi or five elements unify as one. So, five elements are correlated to five types of martial power and are not specific movements mechanically related to internal organs. You cannot guide any movement from any specific internal organ. For example, in practicing Pao Quan or Fire Fist, thinking about energy being sent from the heart or whatever would be a delusion. Correlating elements to internal organs in your martial art practice may sound nice, but is totally useless in reality. Speaking of health benefits, well, I have to say that nobody can strengthen any specific organ by practicing one specific movement from the five element fist, no matter what style you practice, Xing Yi or any other styles. Health should be systematically managed with respect to many factors such as diet, sleep, exercises, stress levels, and so on. It is a 
complete misinterpretation to think that a specific physical Xing Yi movement will strengthen a specific internal organ. The five element theory was not designed for it. Furthermore, let's assume that the five element theory in Xing Yi talks about specific internal organs. So, how about Ba Gua and Tai Chi? Ba Gua mainly applies the Ba Gua O eight trigram theory, and Tai Chi mainly applies Yin Yang theory. Some people conveniently interpreted correlation between the five elements and the five internal organs in terms of health maintenance due to the categorization method mentioned earlier. So, would Bagua have to create its own eight correlations between eight organs and eight trigrams? Would Tai Chi have to apply two categories of organs in order to explain health benefits through physical movements? Of course not. So, any mechanical correlation between different martial movements and internal organs is an incorrect interpretation of ancient philosophical theory. Again, such correlations may sound pleasing and profound, but in reality, they are nothing but misinterpretations. Topic 4 Key Principles of a Five Elements Practice Today, I will emphasize one very important practice in Xing Yi Five Element Practice, Wu Xing He Yi. Any martial training aims to improve practitioner's speed of movement and execution of a martial force. In a practical martial art style like Xing Yi, being able to naturally release a powerful force at high speed without any blockage is one of the training objectives. However, to achieve this level, you first need to practice the five types of power by training each element and animal form. Eventually, you should be able to unify those five types of powers in any single movement without requiring any intention. In other words, you should aim to cultivate the ability to subconsciously release unified martial power. So, that's why a practitioner should practice different forms at different speed, angles, levels of strength, and so on in the process of unifying different type of forces as one. Now, let's move on to the next section so that a commonly happened misperception will be clarified. Topic 5. Misperception of Five Elements and Five Organs In the internal styles, misperceptions often occur on account of the adoption of a historical, cultural, and philosophical concept to martial art practice. As you may have guessed by now, the five elements are no exception. A student asked me if it was necessary to rub the elbow slightly along the ribcage area when practicing Beng Quan or Wood Fist to stimulate the liver meridian in order to benefit health. Short answer, no. Such meridian stimulation will not happen much, if at all. Think about this. If you use your elbow in practice to rub that area for Beng Quan, then how about the other elements? How would you rub your kidney areas? Spleen area? This is just an example of wishful thinking and conflation of two completely different aspects. In martial art practice, no matter what your focus, self-defense skill or health benefits or both, you need to understand the real meaning of each term instead of mechanically interpreting them based on face value. Any practice, 
no matter traditional or modern, must not violate science and the common sense. Furthermore, simplicity is important since great knowledge is not complicated even though sometimes it is complex. It is also very important to point out the essence of a topic instead of complicating it further. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a part of the Ba Shi or 8 pulse routine that demonstrate the different type of power including solid, flexible, extending, and compact in a few movements. Hello, I'd like to demonstrate a few movement from the Xing Yi 8 pulse routine, just a few movements in different direction. So let's start from this direction and uh, with uh, like slower speed. <coughs> now this direction. Okay. So <coughs> Now I turn it back to that direction but with a little bit more faster speed. This direction, okay? So this part. So one, two, three, four. Now I change the angle. So one, two, three. Four. Now I turn back to this angle again but with a little bit faster speed. <coughs> Topic 7 Correction of a student's practice. Hello, I would like to ask my students to demonstrate one of the Xue Dian Xiang Xing Shu's movement and then I correct his practice. Hopefully, he makes some uh, progress. So start from beginning, then slowly, two, okay, then turn, again, continue, okay, turn, okay, now stop, very good, now you can face to here to them from here, right, demonstrate, you know, couple of times, then correct the movement, right, one, two, okay, one, to, okay, let's move back. Let's correct the stance first. We found the stance. F when you're ready, first of all, elbow coordinate with this knee, knee point forward, and then weight on the bike. Then the, the bike push outward. It's not chest won't extend. Okay, hollow in a little bit. In that uh, little finger point upward, thumbs hollow to the body. Bike palm point to the elbow, here push downward. Yes, and uh, look at this direction. Make make sure the right side of the neck tense. Okay, here one. Then the chest open and close. Yes. Then a little bit, little bit here. Crossing, crossing movement. One. Yes. Then two. Right. One. Two. Turn. Turn. Then. Turn, yes, then turn again. One, two, yes, then, no, don't move. Move, yes. So the chest, curve the chest. Yes, then turn again. Right, again. Right, then back to here. Pretty good, thank you. Topic eight, take aways. First, Five elements are a Chinese philosophical concept used for categorizing everything in the universe into five categories, including Jin Mu Shui Huo Tu or Metal, Wood, Water, Fire, and Earth. Second, throughout Chinese history, there have existed different correlations between the five elements and the five organs. TCM applies five element theory to analyze the relationship between each organ in diagnosis, and not merely to analyze each organ based on each element. 
Third, Xing Yi uses five element theory to explain its practice. Other styles such as Tai Chi and Bagua also apply five element theory to some extent in practice, but not as much as Xing Yi. Fourth, a key principle of five element practice is Wu Xing He Yi translation five elements unify as one. You should aim to cultivate the ability to subconsciously release unified martial power. Fifth, a common misperception of five element practice is to push the elbows against the rib cage with the intention of strengthening the liver. Make sure to check out the demonstration and the student correction sections to get a better idea of five element practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.